Hey guys, you know, building and managing a dividend growth investing portfolio is kind of like being the general manager and a coach of a professional sports team. In sports, it's the general manager's job to build a winning roster. The coach, it's his job to deploy the players that the GM got him. And then it's up to the players, of course, to perform their roles well. I've done a lot of coaching over the years. Here I am getting doused with silly string after a middle school basketball team I coached won our conference championship a couple years ago. Well, as the coach and GM of the income builder portfolio team that I've been putting together for nearly four years now, I of course love to have players who contribute lots of income. And in a second, I'm gonna talk about a 7% yielder that we just bought for the IBP. But when my team includes plenty of high yielders, I believe there's also room for a few growthier role players, especially if those players just so happen to be total return superstars in their own right. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Nadell here for the Dividends and Income channel. Before I talk about the three great businesses we just bought for the IBP, do me a favor to help us keep growing, okay? Hit the thumbs up at the bottom of the video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell so you get notifications of new videos as we publish them. I'll get to those three stocks in a second, but first a quick word about the Income Builder portfolio. We launched the IBP at the beginning of 2018. It's been funded by the $2,000 a month that this channel's co-founder, Greg Patrick, allocates for me to invest on his behalf. The IBP now has 44 stocks worth a total of about $125,000, and they combine to produce about $3,100 a year in income. The portfolio's income target is $5,000 in annual dividends within seven years, and we're way ahead of that pace. On our IBP homepage, you can see every stock in the portfolio. There also are links to every article I've written. So if you'd like to learn more about the IBP, make sure you check out the link in the description. All right, let's get right to those stocks we bought on August 30th when we divided $1,000 between three of the IBP's existing positions. Altria, symbol M-O, Costco, symbol C-O-S-T, and Sherwin-Williams, symbol S-H-W. Altria is America's leader in tobacco products. It's a dividend king with more than a half century of dividend growth and a yield of more than 7%. Costco is the warehouse retailer with the best business model in its industry. It has a perfect Simply Safe dividend score of 99 and a 15 year streak of raising its dividend. And Sherwin Williams is the world leader in paints and coatings. It's a dividend aristocrat with decades of double digit annual increases. Altria just announced a 4.7% dividend raise, marking their 52nd consecutive year of increases. Sherwin Williams and Costco have been growing divvies aggressively also. Hey, I already know what some folks are saying. Yeah, but Costco and Sherwin-Williams, their yields are under 1%. Why would any dividend growth investor want them? Well, because every player on a DGI team doesn't need to be a high yield home run hitter. A few can be market beating total return bashers. And that's exactly what Costco and Sherwin-Williams have been for years and years. For this thousand dollar allocation, I put most of the dough toward Altria. Of course I like that it yields more than 7% but I also appreciate the fact that it's a relative bargain compared to Costco and Sherwin-Williams. I'll get to valuation soon, but first, let's talk about each company for a minute. During its second quarter earnings presentation in July, Altria reported superb year-over-year -year revenue growth and earnings growth. The company also raised the lower end of its guidance range, now calling for full-year earnings growth of 4.5 to 6%. Given all the headwinds the industry has been facing, from the COVID-19 pandemic, to inflation, to regulatory pressures, to the gradual decline of cigarette smoking, that's pretty impressive. Because Altria's main product is so addictive, it has pricing power that few other businesses do, which is why Morningstar says it's a wide moat company. Still, Altria knows that its future depends on successfully marketing other products, and it has come up with a moving beyond smoking strategy. Altria recently sold its wine business, but it still owns about 10% of Anheuser-Busch, the world's largest brewer, and it's taken a large stake in Cronus, a Canadian marijuana company. Meanwhile, Altria is rapidly expanding its non-cigarette nicotine products, especially Icos, the heated tobacco technology that's been a major success so far for its international cousin, Philip Morris. Investors apparently have appreciated the effort, as Big Mo has a much better total return than the S&P 500 index so far in 2021. And in a bit of an upset, Altria even has outperformed Sherwin-Williams and Costco. As for Costco, it's one of my favorite businesses. I love that they have made the shopping experience so enriching that tens of millions of people willingly pay an annual membership fee just for the right to spend money at their stores. Costco takes in more money in annual membership fees, about $4 billion, than some of their competitors' total businesses are worth. And their 91% membership renewal rate, <laughs> that's the envy of the entire retail industry. As for Sherwin-Williams, they're recognized as the quality leader in paints and coatings. 
If you want to get a job done by a respected painting contractor, odds are that he or she will tell you you have to use Sherwin-Williams products. No wonder they're number one in their field. And it really isn't close. Okay, now let's talk for a second about dividends. Here's a look at the IBP's top four and bottom four income producers. While Altria sits at the very top after this latest buy of ours, Costco and Sherwin-Williams, they rank near the bottom. Obviously, dividends weren't the first thing on my mind when I chose to include Costco and Sherwin-Williams in the IBP. I look at the income those companies provide as a nice little bonus, something above and beyond their outstanding growth characteristics. And again, as the Income Builder Portfolio's coach and general manager, I appreciate them filling that role so well on this otherwise dividend-centric team. Be aware that Altria's ex-dividend date is coming up pretty fast, September 14th. So if you want to own the stock and you want to get dividends for the upcoming quarter, you'll need to own it by the 13th. Costco and Sherwin-Williams, their ex-dividend dates are further down the line. All right, now let's talk a little bit about valuation. And there's really no way to sugarcoat it. Costco and Sherwin-Williams are overvalued by almost any measure. When looking at those companies next to Altria, most analysts agree that only Big Mo looks attractive from a valuation standpoint. For example, Morningstar says that Altria is trading at about fair value, but says that Sherwin-Williams is priced more than double what Morningstar's analysts think the stock is worth. That underscores the old investing credo, you have to pay a premium for growth. If Costco and Sherwin-Williams are so expensive, why did I decide to add to those positions? Why didn't I just put the entire thousand bucks into Altria? Well, over time, I want to build up all the income builder portfolio's positions. And I believe making occasional small investments, even into overvalued stocks, is an appropriate way to do so. I mean, it's not like Sherwin-Williams and Costco were bargains when we opened positions in them earlier this year, or when we added to both on April 12th, but both have crushed the market since then. Meanwhile, if we invested the full grand into Altria, Big Mo would have become one of the income builder portfolio's very largest positions. Given their steady but not spectacular outlook, I didn't think Altria deserved to be handed such a starring role on this team. As the IBP's general manager and coach, I'm willing to let all three of these players perform their roles, and I'm confident that all will contribute to this team's overall success. All right, that'll do it for today, everybody. I'll be back in a week or so with another video. Again, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Take it easy, everybody. Back at you soon.